And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a quick, easy, delicious meal that you can do in your crock pot. Winter, spring, summer, or fall because in the winter of course we like you know the the crock pot meals but i find in the spring and summer i want to be outside and i don't want to heat up my kitchen too much so i use my crock pot quite a bit in the spring and summer too and this is one of those recipes that is delicious and easy now i have my crock pot and i have a bag of frozen this is just the broccoli sugar snaps carrots and water chestnut blend but you could use any kind of frozen vegetables that you like put those in the bottom of your crock pot sprinkle now this is an ingredient that you'll find in the um, aisle where you get your flour and sugar and things like that and this is just instant tapioca this is just like a little granule and what this does is thicken up the sauce. So we're just going to sprinkle a couple of tablespoons of tapi instant tapioca, not the pearls, the granulated kind, over that. And it just will melt into it and make this wonderful thickened sauce in the final product. Now, in this container, I have one can, a 14 ounce can of chicken broth. I'm going to add some brown sugar, some dry mustard some ground ginger, and some teriyaki sauce. And we're just going to whisk that together. This is the best little whisk, and this comes from that um, Rada company, you know, that a lot of the fundraiser schools and churches will do those fundraisers. That's where I got this, and I absolutely love this whisk. It's wonderful, I have a couple of them. All right, and then we want the zest of one orange. Let me move my extra cutting board here from a chicken. Look at that in just a second. We'll talk about the chicken. This little cutting board, a sweet little viewer made this for me. Is that not the most beautiful cutting board? I love it. Absolutely love it. So I have one big orange that I've washed, and I'm just going to take the zest off of it using a microplane rasp. If you don't have one of these little tools, you can use the fine holes of a box grater will work. Then we can eat the orange after. This happens to be an heirloom orange, which are my favorites. Can only really get them late winter, but they really are very good. I love oranges. That's one of my favorite. It, it, peaches are my favorite fruit and raspberries and oranges. They just, ugh, when the peach is ripe and sweet and drip down your chin when you bite into it, heaven on earth. When an orange is sweet and juicy and just drip down your chin when you bite into it, mm-hmm. And heirloom oranges have a wonderful flavor, but if you don't have an heirloom orange, any orange will work. All right, we're just gonna add that zest to our mixture whisk that together then we are going to take our chicken and I have here three boneless skinless chicken breasts which are kind of big and I've already trimmed them a little bit we just want to cut those into bite-sized pieces and as you cut them I will wash that because I touched it with raw chicken skin hands as you cut your pieces, you want them in bite-sized pieces, just lay them over top of your vegetables. You could use boneless, skinless thighs if you wanted to. I just happen to prefer the chicken breast, but you can use the dark meat if that's what you like, that's fine. Try to cut your chicken pieces into the same size. 
Okay. I love this dish. It's really good, really quick, really easy. And you can mix up the vegetables to what your family prefers or what you prefer if you're cooking it for yourself. I love to do crock pot meals and I do them quite often. I'm a meal planner as I've talked about so many times on this show. I, I sit down typically Sunday afternoons and I look at my calendar and I get my week all planned out of what all of us are doing and then I plan my meals accordingly and based on whatever's on sale at the grocery store this that week. All right, just sprinkle those over it. Wash your hands. Let me get this off here. Wash your hands always. Anytime you handle raw poultry, wash your hands with hot water and soap to get that chicken off there. Okay. And then I like to take a little bit of pepper and sprinkle over the top. I keep a little container like this by my stove or by my prep area. I use um, fresh peppercorns and I grind them in my, I have a coffee, little small coffee grinder. I've showed you how to do that before that I use exclusively for spices and pepper. And then I have a lot ready to go instead of grinding it fresh. I don't do too much ahead because it loses its flavor. Give your mixture one last whisk, pour it over top. And then this needs to cook on high for about four to six minutes. Just plug it up and cook it on high. Or, I mean, excuse me, low, four to six hours. High, a couple to three hours will work. And you will have a delicious, easy meal ready for you when you're ready for it. I'm gonna just clean up, wash that. When I come back, we'll get started on a quick, easy dessert. I'll be back in just a minute. Now our chicken is cooking in the crock pot and you can do that like the night before, get it prepped and then that morning just put it in the, the base of your crock pot and let it go. Or you of course can prep it that morning, whatever you want to do. But a good easy side dish to go along with this meal or any other meal for that matter is a brown sugared peach bake. And it, I love peaches as I just said. And, but there's a caveat to that one. I only like peaches when, fresh peaches, when they are juicy and fresh and oh, so, 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 so good. So the rest of the year, you pretty much have to use either frozen peaches or canned peaches. So in this case, I'm using canned peaches. This is three small cans of just sliced peaches, uh, the unsweetened. I don't want, I don't particularly like the ones in heavy syrup for this kind of a dish. So I've drained most of the liquid off. There's still a little bit on there, but that's okay. In this dish, I have some brown sugar, and then I have some of the round buttery crackers. You know the ones I'm talking about. I'm just gonna crumble these up. Great job for your kids. They love to do stuff like that. I use a meat mallet or a rolling pin or anything really will work. And then I'm just gonna add this to the brown sugar. Then I'm gonna stir in some cinnamon. I love cinnamon. And I'm gonna put just a pinch of salt because I think you need a pinch of salt. I'm gonna kind of stir all that together. This is so easy to do. On the stove, I have a small pan that I am melting one stick of butter and I had uh, I, I use butter butter. I, I'm not a fan of margarine. 
It was so funny. I was going through the grocery store line the other day, and this sweet lady, she was bagging up my groceries, but she hadn't looked up, and uh, I had bought some butter, and she was just making a comment on the butter, and she said, now that everyday man, a lady, only likes butter. <laughs> and I, I just smiled, and I said, yeah, that would be me, and yes, I really only like butter. And uh, we had a sweet conversation. I really do only like butter. All right, butter's melted and boiling away, and get that off, because you don't want that to brown. Now, we are going to take our mixture, and we're gonna sprinkle it over top of my peaches. Now, if you don't need all of this, put it in an airtight bag and save it for another recipe. This makes a great topping on any kind of a fruit bake that you want to do. So I don't think I need all this because I generally do this dish in a larger pan. All right, and then take your melted butter and drizzle it all over top of your peaches and cracker mixture. And again, you could use any kind of fruit you wanted. A frozen fruit blend would be delicious in here. I would thaw that fruit. If you're using frozen fruit, I would thaw it first. And then make sure you drain out all of the excess liquid. Now this will go in a three, 100 to 350, whatever you're baking something on, it's fine. Put this in your oven for about 30 minutes or so, and you will have an absolutely delicious peach crumble to serve alongside your dinner. And you could serve that with some fresh whipped cream or some ice cream, some vanilla bean ice cream would be delicious over that, or maybe some butter pecan or whatever flavored ice cream that you like. I, love vanilla bean over that. So you could serve that alongside, you know, any kind of thing or completely on its own. It's absolutely delicious just like that. I'm just gonna let that bake, get this in the sink. When I come back, we're gonna wrap up this meal. Our chicken will be done and we'll make a delicious, easy stir fry dish to go alongside our chicken. I'll be back in just a few minutes. You know, a commonly used spice in our kitchens is cinnamon. And, you know, it, it, there are so many different varieties of cinnamon. There are two main ones, Ceylon cinnamon and cassia cinnamon. Ceylon cinnamon is typically known more as a Mexican cinnamon because they are the largest importer uh, from Sh Sri Lanka. And Ceylon cinnamon tastes the best of any that I personally have ever tasted. That is one of those types of cinnamon that for the most part, you're gonna to need to go to a spice shop or a really well-stocked grocery store. Most of the cinnamon that we buy in the grocery stores is uh, the uh, Ceylon, or excuse me, the cassia cinnamon, which I have several examples of here. I've talked about before how I love to go to gro ethnic grocery stores anywhere I go. If there's an Asian store, I'm going to go. If there's an Indian grocery store, I'm going to go, and so forth and so on. I really do scout out grocery stores of an ethnic variety anywhere I go because I like to learn about the different types of ingredients. Now, before me, I have a plate full of different types of cinnamon that I picked up at an Asian grocery store because I thought, you know, it would be interesting to see the different types of cinnamon. And even within this, there are different types. Now, the first one here is a Chinese cinnamon. Now, all of these are the cassia, C-A-S-S-I-A. -S -S this is thinner. As you can see, it breaks fairly easy. This one you could actually put in your spice grinder and grind it up to a powder because it is so thin. That is a Chinese um, cinnamon, uh, cassia that I just purchased at a grocery store, all right? This particular one, I believe, came out of Vietnam. Yeah, 
This is a Vietnamese cinnamon. Now this is very, very hard, as you can see. I uh, just got you out two barks. I've got more in here. It has a, a good cinnamony smell, but there's no way that you could grind that in a spice grinder commonly in a house. You would need a, a big industrial type thing. Um, you could maybe, you know, use a hammer to get it in smaller pieces. So if you wanted to use this in your cooking, you would need to um, maybe put it in a, like an, a, spy, a tea infused ball down in your pot or maybe wrap it in some cheesecloth so you could get it out because there's no way you could grind that finely enough. This next one that I have is typically what we would see when you buy cinnamon, I got pepper under and cinnamon under my nails, um, when you buy cinnamon sticks in the grocery store. Now this is one that you would find in your uh, mold ciders and things like that when you just wanna put a cinnamon stick inside your dish and then you know obviously retrieve it at the end. It has a good cinnamon smell. Now these are good, you know, the, the cassia cinnamon is good. It's just not as potent as the Ceylon cinnamon, mm, but it still smells very, very good. Now this one is another one from China and it's just a different, you can see <clears throat> the coloring is darker even within the bark inside there. You see how you've got a richer red flavor? This one is stronger. This one almost has a, a peppery scent to it, a little bit of a, a, like you would think of a black pepper has like a peppery scent to it, but it's very, very, very good. Again, this one is too thick and hard to grind, so you would use these whole and then, you know, fish them out at the end. And then this one is imported from Korea. Very, very mild, hardly any cinnamon flavor a smell at all. So those are just some, you know, whole cinnamon types of cinnamon that you would find at an Asian grocery store or some kind of an ethnic. Now here I have three examples of the pre-ground cinnamon that you would find in any grocery store. If you look closely, I hope it's translating on the camera, you can see the different colors. This one is a richer, richer, richer color. So it's using a little bit better quality of cinnamon bark. This is the, in case you don't know this, I guess I should have said this in the beginning. This is the bark of, I believe it's called a cinnamomium tree. It's the bark of a tree is what cinnamon is. So this is a little better quality. This one is darker. It does not have the same potency as a little bit better quality. There is some difference in the qualities of cinnamon. And this one is kind of a middle of the road. This one would be my favorite out of these three. And um, you can taste the difference. Now, how do you know if your cinnamon is still good to use? It's simple. Open your jar and smell it. If it's older than six months to a year, it's probably going to have lost a lot of its smell and a lot of its flavor compounds. They do dissolve very, very quickly. Cinnamon is one of those ingredients that you need to buy in small quantities and use it up because it really truly does lose its flavor and potency after exposure to air and etc. But I just thought it would be fun to show you the different types of cinnamon. I enjoy learning about these kinds of things. I just wanted to show you the different types of cinnamon since we used it in today's program. Alrighty, now as a side dish to our meal, we are going to make just a quick, easy stir fried vegetable blend using some frozen stir fried vegetable or vegetables. I have here a, a skillet that I've just put a couple of teaspoons of oil. I like olive oil, just a mild neutral flavored oil. And I am heating that over medium high heat. You want it to be 
hot. You want your oil to be shimmery. And for our sauce, let me go ahead and mix up our sauce here because this goes real quick. I have some soy sauce, some rice vinegar, some toasted sesame oil, which is one of my favorite ingredients, and some honey. And I need to get the honey out, just a little touch of sweetness, not much, just a little bit. About a teaspoon or so of good honey. Mix all that together and then set that to the side. And then when your pan is hot, add, I'm using the pepper stir fry blend, which has red peppers, yellow peppers, onions, and green peppers. But you could use any kind of vegetables that you like, or you can even chop the fresh if you want to. And then just let that stir fry for just a, a few minutes, and then we will add our sauce. This really cooks in about two to three minutes, not long at all when you have high heat. Now, let's talk about our meal. Here is our chicken. I just took a serving out of the crock pot, put it in a bowl, because I'm gonna put those vegetables beside it. I topped it with just a little bit of, just some sesame seed that you can buy in the grocery store. And here's a little hint for you. If you, I have my spices at home stored in a drawer beside my stove top. And I write on the top of my jars what they are so I can spot that at an instant. So if you store your jars in a, your spices in a drawer, just write on the top or get little tiny labels if they're dark and then you can see at an instant what you've got. And it really does help. Now, so here's our chicken teriyaki that we made in our crock pot. In the bottom is some of the juices. You could serve this over rice if you wanted to, or uh, you know, a noodle. If you wanted to make a noodle dish, you could use buckwheat noodles, udon noodles, spaghetti, linguine, angel hair, whatever you wanted. And here is our delicious peach cinnamon crumb topped bake. And oh, does that smell good. I would love to dollop some ice cream on that, maybe some coconut, because I really like coconut, and have that for dinner, but that's dessert. Now let's get back to our vegetables. They really cook very quickly. If you don't have any frozen vegetable blends on hand, use what you've got. If you've got carrots and celery and maybe some broccoli or whatever in your pantry or your refrigerator, use that or whatever kind of blend of vegetables that you like to eat. Because I keep frozen vegetables on hand. That's a pantry staple item for me. So that if I need a quick little side dish, I've got it ready to go. We're just gonna let that go about two minutes and then we'll finish it up with the sauce. Alrighty, now, the advantage of cooking over higher heat is that all of the liquid evaporates. So your vegetables aren't waterlogged. So we're gonna stir our mixture up again, our little dressing, and by the way, this makes a wonderful dressing over salad or a sliced cucumber, radishes, Celery makes a great little salad dressing. Put that in there, let it go for just a minute. That sesame oil, oh my goodness, that smells so, 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 so good. And I am gonna add a little bit of toasted sesame seeds to that, because I like them. And that's it. Start to finish in just a few minutes. It's really easy to do. So let's add that to our meal. And you've got a quick and easy to cook meal any day of the week. Try these recipes. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna.
thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.